Welcome back, ghouls and goblins. I hope you're all having an absolute magical day. And thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. As always, a new style of video that we've done a few times before, but are looking to make it maybe more frequent on the channel, if you're into it. Hashtag Flight of the Concords. Um, you know, just reviewing our week, our month, whatever it happens to be, and just talking about uh, ourselves in general and what we have planned for the future. So this week was a big one, right? We had the pre-release events in paper. If anyone took part in those at their LGS, we did a pre-release guide breaking down the limited archetypes, um, the tier ratings, all of this, which was really nice. And then this translates over to the limited environment within Arena that is now available, which is awesome. So if you're collecting and farming your set through the limited experience, we've got you covered here. And then we had the early access event for Arena, which was a surprise. Uh, I know not all content creators got invited to this. Uh, however unfortunate this may be, in the future, you can ensure that you do get an invite just by sending an email to con creators at wizards.com. And again, I made a video on this. I myself didn't get uh, an invite out of the gate. I had to go, uh, you know, get into those DMs, I, I slid right in and I was like, hey, how do I get in on this? Obviously, we do this full time. I, I expect to be, um, you know, uh, invited. <laughs> so we got the invite and then we shared out uh, that information to everybody else. And I know that we had a ton of other creators get invites because of that information that we shared. So that was uh, another highlight of my week. I love helping people out, right? That was fantastic. And we ourselves got invited uh, to the event, which was great aligning with our three years of content creation as well we uh streamed for like 18 hours of the streets of new capenna early access event we made uh of those 37 decks that we created um theory crafting um at 10 or 12 of them and we filmed the majority of them which are all on youtube you guys can check those out i was doing like three videos a day so if you haven't seen all of those decks that we did for the early access event Definitely check them out, right? And uh, then, you know, we got this fantastic uh, package in the mail that we had to wait for, and we opened it. It was fantastic. Uh, Beetle and Grimm's uh, Tamagawa. Holy Toledos. What a treasure that was. And to celebrate that, because there's lots of uh, things to support playing uh, on tabletop and in paper, boom, we're into Commander, right? We have two Commander decks uh, looking for more and potentially thinking that we could do Commander deck text on the channel. If you're interested, I have a friend who is very, very shy, doesn't want to be on camera, but I've been trying to convince them to play Commander with me. Uh, and then we can make some content for everyone uh, in this aspect, which I think would be a ton of fun, right? And then boom, season reset. Let's go. Oh, no, not even that. Before the season reset, we placed in the top 1200, uh, rank 480, I believe, somewhere here, 440, 480, uh, tracking my rank DK through the last day and throughout the entire month because I pushed uh, last month into the top 10 or whatever it happens to be. Um, and then we coasted all month for like three weeks. You know what I mean? Boom, 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 fell down to 1500, pushed all the way up uh, to 300. And some, and then fell back down to that uh, 480 finishing point, right? And we have all of this rank decay without playing any matches, parted out, which is fantastic, right? So you can kind of estimate how much time you'll need to play uh, to qualify for the new um, competitive events. And if, again, you're unfamiliar with these changes, I think this stretches back to a which you can gain access to through the uh, normal mythic qualifiers. And then we have the new play in events, which will gain you access to the mythic qualifier, which is super exciting. So you can get play in points by completing uh, your season end rank in the top 1200. You can gain instant access to the mythic qualifier for being in the top 250, which is fantastic. And then, you know, getting into the pro tour, getting into the championships, uh, the world championship from there, I should say, which is really, really cool. Those are big opportunities, right? So uh, we have a fantastic video on this. If you haven't seen it, check that out as well. And then boom, rank reset. We out here. 
We have Ob Nixilis in the house. We're going to talk a little bit about this when we wrap up today's video as well. Does it need to be banned? That's what everybody's talking about right now, right? So we're using Rakdos Sacrifice in traditional alchemy, which is best of three. Uh, and we're tearing it up. We have a fantastic win rate. I think 72%, which is really nice. Hitting uh, Mythic Rank 14 and then actually climbing into Mythic Rank 13, not by playing any games, which is always really cool as well. So that is what we've been up to for the last two days. You know, I'm running on about three hours of sleep last night. Woof. Just playing ranked, playing ranked, playing ranked. A little bit of sleep, a little bit of sleep, a little bit of sleep. Playing ranked, playing ranked, playing ranked, right? Uh, and now we're Mythic, right? So this is easy peasy lemon squeezy. What do we have planned for you in the future? Well, it's free to play content, right? We've really played with all of the wild cards in the early access content. Not that I don't have all the cards in the event because I, I might have already bought them all. But uh, <laughs> we're going to do free to play content regardless, right? Um, decks with commons and uncommons, also known as an artisan build for the, um, you know, more budget individual like yourself. And uh, these are great ways to complete your different daily quests, right? Those different color quests or different objective quests uh, while still keeping the game fresh, playing different style of decks uh, every day, every couple of days, whatever it happens to be. Is it going to be a great way to make that farming experience more enjoyable so you don't get burned out just playing the one deck over and over again? Um, you know, while you do farm those wild cards, complete that meta deck, Start pushing into mythic and competing in these events and growing your collection this way right so cool beans here also a thought of new content uh that isn't typically what we do but a new account a free to play account no dollary dues just farming just ranking up and maybe we can hit mythic on a free to play account as well i don't know about that right but it would be the challenge right so potentially if we can get enough support for this that is another idea for new content alongside the commander deck tech and potentially gameplay as well which could be a lot of fun um more things uh for the future alongside the new free to play decks that i'll be working on we will continue to uh spice in a, a little bit of um the competitive builds as well because we don't want to just let our account decay this month. We want to, as it is the first month with the new system in place, we want to be in the top 250 at the end of the month, right? And, you know, this kind of brings me to a general thought as to, well, what is the channel and, and what do we want from it? Well, we want to be a competitive Magic the Gathering Arena channel, right? I think we showcase that month after month after month, being in the top uh, 20 at the very least, most times the top 10 to start the month and finishing in the top 1200, right? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But building on this foundation, I do find it incredibly uh, rewarding to support uh, the rest of the community uh, who is not looking for that competitive edge as well. But I do think that it is, um, you know, very important to have that foundation there uh, and build on top of it first and foremost. So first, we're being competitive, which means you may see days with no uploads like you did uh, yesterday, right? Because I was just rushing ranked all day, right? And now we'll reap the rewards from that uh, more so than me just always being bogged down, right? So it's going to be a little bit of an ebb and flow because the competitive uh, structure needs to be first within the channel. This being said, there could be a tournament that I have that day, right? Um, this really does interfere with you know my obsessive content upload because in three years we have like 1700 videos on youtube right that, that's ridiculous right that's a lot of content so uh that's to be expected as we move forward um you know we're still doing the member only uploads within other games we did kirby we did star wars battlefield you know whatever happens to be forza whatever's new whatever's banging elder ring um we've got that for you there uh also now doing coaching sessions to support individuals who want to be more competitive and take a run at this right and incredible feedback so far with the individuals who've signed up uh some even going out of their way because they think uh it's gonna get busy and paying uh, a year in advance <laughs> Woo! but hey that's how you lock up the spot right that's how you you definitely get in my schedule um so continuing to build upon that structure and uh hopefully that we get um 
you know, a booking structure that just has like available time slots that you can just book online for. I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, and again, not for everyone, just for a select group of people have been bugged about it forever. And then, you know, the people who are uh, partaking in it have really been um, showing a lot of gratitude, which is quite nice. So uh, it gives me the uh, the go ahead to expand on this, which is quite nice as well. So, you know, that competitive foundation is really important to the channel. Like I said, then the free to play content, uh, the jank I would love to do, like I said, the commander stuff, the um, the other free to play accounts. Uh, but again, these are big undertakings and we will definitely need your support. Uh, so again, thank you all so much for your support in these last three years. It's absolutely fantastic. All of the viewers, all of our sponsors, uh, Wizards of the Coast for the fantastic game. You know, we like to complain sometimes, but at the end of the day, you know what? We're still all here playing magic every single day, right? I don't see anyone playing anything else. I certainly am not. So again, thank you to everyone who's been involved uh, within this journey uh, alongside me. Really appreciate it. Really looking forward uh, to working alongside everyone more within the future. Enjoy your daily ad. That's kind of what we're doing today. It's like, oh, I don't want to make a video. I'm so tired. I've only slept two hours, but I still need to make a video. Uh, here we go. We are doing weekly updates. Uh, before we end today's video though we do need to address something uh slightly more important obnixilis the adversary holy toledos first and foremost we've heard you know just a plethora of fantastic nicknames right bob obnoxious knob dixilis oh my god right there's a few of the bangers that we've heard so far um secondly a lot of people are calling for bans, right? They're saying that standard, um, you know, alchemy, totally unplayable due to Obnixilis. If you're unfamiliar, it's the new Planeswalker, three mana, casualty one, so you can sacrifice, well, actually casualty X, so you can sacrifice a creature with power one or greater, and the loyalty of the copy of the Obnixilis, uh, which is non-legendary, so you can have both of them, which is fantastic, will have starting loyalty of the sacrifice creature's power. Uh, and then plus one is, you know, they lose two life unless they discard a card. You gain two life if you control a devil. Uh, this is absolutely fantastic. So you have two planeswalkers in play for three mana. They're both plus one. Um, potentially, they're four fours after those plus ones. And your opponent will immediately need to deal with that. Or they're taking uh, four damage. Or they're losing two cards. And then this stacks up turn after turn after turn. So, uh, wow. First of all, this is very good. I can't say that it's better than Oko, strictly because it doesn't have hard removal. Oko could turn and you're an elk, you're an elk, right? Uh, and this is what made Oko absolutely fantastic. However, this isn't far behind, right? Obnixilis is incredibly powerful. Do I think it will be banned personally? As a, as a betting man, eventually. But right away, no. We will see... Um, digital edits in formats like Alchemy in Historic before we see a, a ban or a restricted announcement for it in paper or tabletop. My opinion, of course, they did act on Oko very quickly, right? This was nipped in the butt almost immediately alongside Omnath. Will it be that quick this time? I don't think think so however i also believe that this will depend upon the tournament schedule we had uh very big tournaments within the community when oko came out like official tournaments that were dominated by oko decks right 90 percent plus of the field were oko and that's what they're going to be looking for before they make an official paper band as far as what I have witnessed in, again, the last three years of actually really, really paying attention uh, to what's going on with everything. So it's good. Use it while the getting is good. Don't be worried about the wild cards. You'll get them back. That's fine. Um, if they change it, uh, that's okay as well. I would be really curious to see what the digital changes become and might even still play the card after its nerf, right? So uh, I think that's fine. Arcane Bombardment has been mentioned a few times as well. <laughs> now, this is a fun card. Uh, one of the decks that we focused on in the 
early access event that I had the most fun with. Um, holy Toledo's. I think actually my best game of Magic ever. I, I remember saying that I peaked during this video. Um, but you know, just discarding the Opus and then free casting the Opus on your turn, on their turn, on your turn, on their turn. <laughs> it's too much. It's literally unbeatable and a complete lockout in the best ways, if I'm being unclear. But it's very expensive. You have to ramp into it. It can be countered. It can be removed. Uh, so woof. Crazy stuff. Explorer is a new format that is a uh, tabletop true format uh, that wants to build towards Pioneer. However, we don't have all of the Pioneer cards in Arena yet, so we can't call it that. We are looking at building uh, new decks for this once some adjustments have been made. Right now it is uh, populated with Winota. It is populated with Tibalt's Trickery, and it is not necessarily a fun environment unless you are playing one of those things. Uh, so again, waiting for kind of the uh, bans or restricted uh, announcements for that for now. And again, those things could change, but um, it just, it seems to be almost more of a problem in Explorer than it is with Winota, with Tibble Trickery than it is with Obnixilis in Standard and within Alchemy, right? So, um, you know, those are the, two cons of each of the different formats if you're looking you know to play one of those formats to rank up i don't know what else i have to say uh th that's my thought on obnix list i don't think it's too bad um you know there's lots of things that can deal with it fairly effectively i feel like uh, a big one right now is Sh shadows verdict uh you know it's going to take care of those planeswalkers they're gone the devils are gone they're not doing any damage and typically you know it's being run in a sacrifice uh, or token shell, and you know you can clean up all of that without uh, any any death effects as well, which is nice permanently because they're into exile, uh, which is fantastic. And and that's just one of the many ways that we can be dealing with it. Um, and as, again, as we uh, have more time with the cards, uh, I do think that we will become more accustomed to it, and maybe the calls for Ben might not be so aggressive. Another example is the resurgence of Mono Green utilizing Trample, something that we've seen die off as it could not compete with Mono White. However, the Trample is so good against those chump blockers trying to protect that Planeswalker, right? And a lot of those greens have not only Trample, but Haste as well to get the job done in a, a surprising fashion. All right, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. We were going to talk a, a little bit about our, our rank today as well. I know we should probably jump over here quickly. That's where our entire discussion was uh, meant to take place. So you could stare at my beautiful mythic rank with my gems. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, we'll just we'll just do a quick flex at the end, right? Quick flex, quick flex, quick flex. Almost a million gold. That's basically my only goal right now with an arena is to reach one million gold. After that. I really don't know what I'll do with myself. I, I, I think I might be a little bit lost and maybe there'll be some uh, legacy events that cost a million gold to enter that Wizards will make just for me, right? Wouldn't that be fantastic? So we've not played a game of rank since this morning, which was, oh, probably four or five hours ago at least. And we're still ranked 17, right? So, you know, losing a couple spots, the decay is minuscule throughout the entire month if you want to reach mythic and try to finish within the top 1200 to collect those play points to enter that mythic qualifier which again can be entered through gems gold and play points or on that within the competitive video but uh, i'm sure you've already watched it right leave a like support the channel if you can have a magical day no matter what and we will see you soon in the next take care you guys and girls ghouls goblins